My name is Henry Griffin. I've spent my whole life living in exotic places, and I learned a great many things. I also had a habit of getting into trouble. A lot of trouble. So to keep me safe, my anthropologist parents shipped me off to the one place I'd never lived, America. Now I live with my uncle and cousin, trying to fit in at Smithson High, a school inside the National Museum Complex. I work in the museum's basement, where they store all kinds of weird stuff. Where were you raised? In a cave? Only for a year. Want to know what I've learned so far? No matter how hard I avoid it, trouble always seems to find me. I guess I'm not the only one leashed to a noise machine. Okay, if I can read hieroglyphics, I can follow simple instructions. Hmm, not so bad. doing the work. This belongs in a helmet, not a hairnet. Hunter, we only have to run the cafe for another week, okay? Th then you can do whatever it is you want to do with your do. Jasper, you're project manager. Just sign my time card so I can get to practice. No, I already said no. Well, how about I stuff you in a locker and let you think it over? Keep your hands to your stomach. behavior in lowland apes what was that all about oh hunter doesn't get at least a b in practical econ he's off the team but i had no intention of being his alibi it's good you stood your ground yeah i wasn't on the ground but thanks anyway it's with the uh, kitty cat toy i'm weaving a hammock for my expressive hands art class sleeping in your old toddler bed isn't very tranquil i thought your parents were shipping your old hammock still haven't heard from them it's monsoon season where they're working. There's no way we can reach each other. This isn't over, Jungle Boy. Not by a country mile. How far is that? Oh, it's the same as a regular mile. 1,609 meters. Please pick up your Eclipse glasses. Looking forward to Friday's Eclipse? Only for the last eight years. Don't forget these. Your eyes will thank you when you're my age. I'm set. Thanks, Professor DeGroote. Hang on there, bro. The e-reader, too. Pip, I dumped all the assigned reading material on it. Oh, you know my class is a tech-free zone. Jasper? Hope you don't mind holding a book with actual pages. Hey, Maggie. Hey. Hey. Oh, sorry, Greta. I... Accident. Not according to Freud. As we learned in the last lecture, Herodotus was the Greek writer known as the father of history. Can anyone tell me another not so nice name he was also called? No one. Not even the brilliant Ms. Winnick? Maggie. Maggie. Sorry. Uh, some people thought he invented too much history and called him the father of lies. Correct. Thoughts, class. Well, who might have called him a historian? Are you okay? And who might have called him a liar? 
course. Julie? Smart choice, Professor Tulin. The Turkey Mango Club is superb today. Oh, double latte on the house. <laughs> I don't mean to be the food pyramid police, but just one of these sandwiches contains over 500 calories, 50 grams of fat, and... And 100% of my daily protein. Stick that in your quinoa salad, you vegetotalitarian. Hey, what kind of prayer circle is that? Oh, it's a texting circle. They're talking to each other on their cell phones. But they're right next to each other. <laughs> you city dwellers have strange customs. <laughs> Sorry, but where I lived in China, that's considered a compliment. News flashed beast from the east. You're not in China. <gasps> hey, Maggie, what's up? Hopefully not my lunch, and stop eating up our profits. Professor Gardenhire will lose it if she finds out we're managing this place like a Wall Street hedge fund. A uh, walrus hedgehog? Hmm? I just want to know what you're so upset about. I never said I was upset. Your shoulders are hunched. You've been pulling out your hair and biting your nails. You're acting just like Rebecca. Who's Rebecca? A baboon friend of mine in Tanzania. Oh, good. She's a nervous wreck whenever anything unexpected happened in her territory. OK. It's about the new plunder of ancient world exhibit. This is going to sound crazy. Which is why you're only telling me. Yes. So there's this ruby. The Fortuna. The one that's cursed. It's not cursed. But some troubling things have happened since the exhibit opened. Troubling as in? As in a fossilized bison horn fell off a display and cost a dentist his front teeth. A steam heater broke and French fried some Parisians. And a bunch of rats attacked just when the Jonas Brothers were getting a private tour. That doesn't sound cursed to you? The only curse is that the museum is losing customers every day because of the accidents. You know what, never mind. Forget I mentioned it. Hey, don't be so quick to dismiss an intuition. It can be a roadmap which tells the mind where to go next. Yeah, we got a free period. We could come by and check things out. OK. But only if you promise not to touch anything. Last week, there was a line to get in here. Obviously, the situation's gone viral. Well, they should quarantine the museum. Oh, no, viral as in bloggers are warning people to stay away. Well, bloggers as in web journal, web as in Wait, the, just tell us everything you know. This ruby is called the Fortuna after the Roman goddess of fate. Its origins are unknown, but over the centuries, it's belonged to Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Marie Antoinette. We all know what kind of luck they had. Poisoned, stabbed, beheaded. Then what happened? It was lost during the Russian Revolution and resurfaced 25 years ago. The people who found it were killed the next day in a freak accident. That doesn't sound cursed to you. Nut jobs make the same it's cursed claim about the Hope Diamond, Tut's tomb, and the Chicago Cubs. There's never any proof to back up those claims. Maybe it's just simply a matter of being at the extreme end of the bell curve. Some things, like some people, are just born unlucky. Stones aren't born, Jasper. They're created by pressure and thermal activity. Well, what about my kidney stones? Because when I passed mine, it totally felt like I was given birth. So you'd never consider that the relentlessly bloody history of this ruby may be something beyond explanation? I'd consider it when I'm 100 years old wearing a diaper and calling you mommy. Of course, the day you guys show up is the day nothing happens. Sorry I wasted your spare period. Don't sweat it. Hey, what are you doing for the eclipse? Watching it? Like everyone else who wants to witness the greatest natural phenomenon of the decade? Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Um, but I actually meant, like, where and with whom? Where is a secret, and with whom? We're in the same class. I think you can figure that one out. <laughs> he won't touch it, will he? No, I, he's not completely uncivilized. <laughs> Security, Grand Lobby Exhibit. Security, Grand Lobby Exhibit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I slipped. It was just an accident. There's no need for that, Officer Strollin. Yeah, my cousin's new here. He's not used to wearing shoes or whatever those smelly things are. What are those? Well, if the Dean's son and Miss Winnick both vouch for you. False alarm. It's all clear. From now on, please pay attention to our simple rules. Yes, sir. It won't happen again. 
Where did it go? We touch the case, it drops into a biometric security vault where it stays until the curator resets the system. It shouldn't be long. Oh. I was totally lucky. It almost beamed you. You okay? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> hey, guys. Guys, it's over. Well, maybe this will finally get the trustees to cough up some renovation funding. <laughs> oh, no. What's going on in that hyperactive brain of yours? I haven't sensed an aura this primeval since I fell into the well of a thousand tears in the Great Pyramid. I knew it. You're gonna dig deeper into this, aren't you? He's not the only one. Don't do this, Hunter. Do what? Get back at you for making me look like an idiot in front of the entire school? Both of you, step back. Checking too much haterade again? No, sir. That uh, anger management course you made me take last year really, uh, really changed my life. From when I just saw Hurley, you wearing that uniform for the last time. What's going on here? Hunter thought I should try out for the team, but I was too shy to practice on the field. You too shy? We needed to see if I could take hit or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what'd you learn? Uh, if I'm gonna play the game, I need to work on my blind side. You're playing a game all right, only it isn't football. Just because you're the quarterback, don't think you can sneak a 2.4 GPA past me. You could have gotten me suspended. What are you up to? Peace, brother, nothing more. I once met a one-armed Inuit man who told me, revenge is a fish best left in the igloo. Today's foe may be tomorrow's friend. I don't get it. It, it means an eye for an eye just blinds everybody. But you said he lost an arm. It's a metaphor, Hunter. If football's so important to you, put in your hours at the cafe like the rest of us. What does a king who has everything want? Gold, gold, more gold. Whatever he touched turned to gold. But think about it. Is that really a gift? Or more like a curse? A curse. He couldn't even eat a sardine without it instantly becoming metal. Uh, forget holding food. What about when he had to take a leak? It's definitely a curse. I disagree. Although it's a sad morality tale, it's still just a myth. Don't you believe in any myths? Scientific evidence, empirical conclusions, logic, not magic, is what's real. Thoughts class. Do you love your parents? Of course I do. Can you prove it? Interesting point, Mr. Griffin. Please elaborate. Just because you can't prove something doesn't mean it isn't real. Like love, hope, faith, even luck. Speaking of parents, Jasper said you're having trouble reaching yours. Yeah, uh, I've tried, they've tried, but somehow we keep missing each other. So it's just a bit of bad luck. No, between the time difference, satellite interference, weather. In other words, there's a logical explanation. Just like what's happening at the museum has nothing to do with that overhyped ruby. I'm open-minded. Explain all the logic in those accidents. I can't, Henry. Not yet. But I do know it has nothing to do with a curse. I never said it was cursed. I said it was possible. It's the ruby's not... origins are still a mystery, right? And until well, we I dig up more information... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys, 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 just chill. Okay, well, we all want the same thing, to figure out what's going on and make the museum safe again. You don't think I'm already on it? Trust me, I am. Okay. Expect to hear from me soon. Expect to hear from me sooner. But, what, uh...
Henry, check this out. I think there are some pictures in here you'll want to see. Wow. Wow. An original Sanskrit Hito Padesha. What? An ancient book of legends. Oh. My dead language skills aren't what they used to be. This fable is about a cursed stone born 5,000 years ago during a total eclipse. I told Maggie stones could be born. In the great battle between the sun and the moon for control of the skies, an orb of power was cast from the heavens. Born of beauty and blood, it brought ruin and misfortune to all who possessed it. It looks exactly like the Fortuna Ruby, right down to the lightning bolt flare. What's your cell phone doing in the trash? It's broken or something. It's working fine. Maggie sent you a text. See, I told you it was broken. You know, for someone who reads Sanskrit, you sure are illiterate. Look, for your eyes only, meet me in the boiler room right now. Don't be late. Boiler room? Why would she want to meet there? Because it's private and because it's dark and because that's where teenagers go to go to never mind i got the same text she must have found something these are the heating lines for the museum's ground floor all these gauges look prehistoric all except one that controls the plunder exhibit I don't get it. The faceplate has been changed, and so has the main valve. So what? So the only new meter just happened to be the one that blew? That's no accident. That's no curse. That's tampering. Or maybe it's just a cheap replacement part? Maybe. Except for the reason I came down here in the first place. What if the light didn't fall down because it's old? What if the anchor bolts were intentionally stripped? You know, she may be right. Every accident, the falling horn, the busted heater, the rat attack on the Jonai, the crashing chandelier, that could have all been orchestrated by someone. But why would anybody want to scare people away from the museum? Hmm, that's a brain strainer. To steal a two zillion dollar ruby? It can't be stolen. You saw what happened when I touched the case. That's true. Day, night, tourist, no tourist. That ruby's not going anywhere but straight down into the vault. Okay. If we can't figure out how somebody might steal it, Maybe we can figure out who. <sighs> oh, don't do that. Strolling's a gum chewer, isn't he? I suppose so. Why? the dweebs on that sketchy website. I mean, are you getting hot? It's a boiler room. Well, it's beginning to feel more like a sauna. Why is it rising? Time to go. Don't bother, it's jammed. What do you mean? How could it be jammed? Somebody's been down here. The emergency shutoff switch is broken, and so is the handle. Oh. Oh, is there another way out? Zero bars. We're too deep. Either this is a warning, or somebody's trying to kill us. Or the ruby's bad luck signal is reaching us loud and clear. We won't survive past 140 degrees. You can't break down a one-ton iron ore with a hollow pipe. The laws of physics won't allow it. And bees can't fly because they violate some other dynamics here. That's an urban legend. This actually is impossible. Napoleon said impossible is a word found only in the dictionary of fools. Nelson Mandela said it's always impossible until it's done. <sighs> Confucius says to define the future, we must learn from the past. Okay, whoa, how are we learning from the past by doing the exact same thing? You're right. Does anybody have chopsticks? What? what? Never mind. Just aim for the latch to the weak point. Oh! Good thing you were making your rounds down there, Officer Strollin. Yeah, you were a lifesaver yet again. Just doing my job.
Maggie, I expect more from you. Jasper, man up. You don't have to do everything anyone asks you to do. And Henry, you're not in the jungle, so you don't have to go jungle anymore. You could have killed Officer Strowland with that battering ram. And he could have killed us. If someone is trying to punk you, perhaps it's one of your football friends instead of one of our employees. You don't think there's any validity to our evidence? You mean your conspiracy theory? No. Maintenance replaced that meter last summer. And as for your stripped molly bolt, it is a clavo, a decorative nail. Doesn't hold up anything. Anyway, it's all moot. Plunder exhibit is being packed up and shipped off first thing in the morning. Too many lawsuits, too few visitors. That's the first sensible thing I've heard in days. Please don't blame the boys, Dean. I pulled them into this. It's my fault. I'm sorry. I'll see you soon. Well, it wasn't a total waste. Margaret Winnick actually made a mistake and admitted it. Stuff like that isn't easy for her. She's kind of like a Bengal tiger. Intelligent, but mysterious. Beautiful, yet intimidating. You know what? I don't really need an analysis of someone I've known since I was 10. Is there something wrong? What would give you that idea? Your aura says you want to strangle me right now. Okay. I know all about your eclipse plans with Maggie tomorrow. You know, if you want to do something with her alone, just say so. If we had plans, don't you think I would tell you? You might not if it was a secret. Sorry. See you soon. Are you gonna stay on iCat all night? iCat? Mock, avoid, or ignore technology all you want, Henry. I'm not avoiding it. I just don't like it. Well, do you like being out of touch with your mom and dad? Because if you actually kept your phone on you, or at least let me teach you how to use the internet, you could talk to them and see them simultaneously. Okay, fine, teach me. But later, right now, we need to talk. I don't care about your secret leave me out plans with Maggie. I told you, whoever Maggie is watching the eclipse with, it's not me. We need to talk about the ruby. Well, there's nothing to discuss. You got dragged into a whole lot of not a drama. And now it's over. But what if Maggie was right? What if everything was orchestrated so the exhibit would close and the ruby would have to be moved? It's being shipped out at dawn. It's got nothing to do with us anymore. So you think it's just okay to let Stroll and get away with it? Would you lay off him? The dude's been working at the museum for years. Which means he has access to everything. I smelled jackfruit and banana on his breath, just like the gum I found in the boiler room. Paranoid, not listening. And his shoe prints in there. His boots match the same tread marks. Okay, half the goths in school wear tactical boots like that. Look, I know there isn't any hard evidence, and I know there's a missing piece of the puzzle. I have about a thousand missing pieces. Which is exactly why we need to get down to the loading dock. That's exactly what we're not gonna do. Look, you heard my dad. Another word about mythical objects and jewel thieves. You'll be yin-yanging your way to military school.
auditing our books tomorrow, and by my calculations, we're running a deficit. You're project manager, and if I get downgraded because you and your cousin... Jasper, are you even listening to me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Maggie. Hey, Where sorry, have you been? You are so lucky. My dad had an early breakfast meeting. Please? Please tell me you got mugged meditating in the park and that you were nowhere near this morning's heist. Where did you get that? Okay, come on. Come on. Ready for the eclipse? Hey, how's it going, Professor? Big day, isn't it, boys? Oh, yes, sir. Very much so. Why? Why did you steal it? I didn't steal it. I stole it from the guy who stole it. Well, was it strolling? I don't know. I couldn't see his face. It was smoking and he was wearing a gas mask. Well, did he see you? Definitely. But we were fighting. <laughs> This from his neck. It is our first solid clue. Solid? I really can't see Strollin wearing something like this. I mean, who are these three? These three could be anyone. But not anywhere. That is cashmere in the background. I've been there. Well, we have to tell my dad. No, no. I just tell Strollin, and we cannot rule him out yet. Well, we have to tell someone. What were you thinking, Henry? Don't answer that. Obviously, you weren't thinking, as usual. Oh, come on, Maggie. Look, all he did was prove you were right. You got the photographic memory. Do you recognize them? Or remember anybody at the museum who was wearing that pennant? No. Okay, you said the people who found this ruby died in a freak accident. What kind of accident? I usually skip that part of the tour, but they were crushed to death by a rogue elephant right in front of their 10-year-old son. Oh, in cashmere? I believe so, yeah. But that doesn't change anything. Give me the ruby. I'm taking it back to the proper authorities. Who are the proper authorities, anyway? Everyone always says that. Uh, until we have more answers, we can't trust anybody. I, I don't even trust myself with this thing. It's bad luck. This thing is a hunk of corundum, a rock, nothing more. It is not jinxed or hexed or cursed. <gasps> oh, get this meat sheet off me! Oh. Now do you believe me? I believe in you not taking me seriously when I told you to tie up the food properly. No wonder we're headed for an F in this workshop. It's a minefield in here. I don't think it's so bad. You guys are in denial about everything. Obviously, nothing I can say will convince you to see reason, so I'm washing my hands of this whole thing, starting with my fingerprints. Wait, where are you going? I'm not missing DeGroote's field trip to watch the eclipse for a trip to the big house. Oh! Get it! Get it! The ruby! Where's the ruby? in your hand? Huh. Oh, Hurley, he cleaned this mess up. <laughs> Everyone, Officer Stroland has an announcement. Due to a serious incident this morning, the museum is now closed until further notice. Everyone, please move to the exit. We'll help Hunter clean up. Both of you. In my office now. Did you steal that ruby? No. Do you know where it is? No. Do you know who has it? No. Henry thinks Strollin's a thief. Interesting theory, except that I was having breakfast with him when the robbery call came in. Why do I get the feeling there's more to this than what you're telling me? Maybe because we haven't actually said anything. Good point. So until I get some satisfactory answers, the both of you are staying put. Under no circumstances are you to leave this room. If you don't find that ruby, <laughs> goodbye, Yale. Hello, jail. I was so sure it was stolen. But if he isn't the thief, then who is? What difference does it make now? Sorry I accused you of making secret plans with Maggie. <laughs> Forget about it. At least she was smart enough to stay out of trouble. <laughs> I'm not missing DeGroote's field trip to watch the eclipse for a trip to the big house. Do you actually remember DeGroote telling the class about a trip to see the eclipse? No, I don't. Neither do I. 
Funny how he only told Maggie unless. Okay, was there anything distinctive uh, about the guy in the gas mask? No. Wait. He was left-handed. De Groot is left-handed. He has a copy of the Hito Padesha in his classroom. And when we saw him this morning, his neck was scratched exactly where I tore off this pendant. You've no idea how much I've been looking forward to this eclipse. Where's everyone else? And take a look at this. But he lived in India until he was 10. He'd now be the same age as the boy whose parents were killed. After finding the ruby. The boy who watched his parents die. It's the group. He has Maggie. What does he want? The ruby for her life. He says we have one hour to bring it to him at the old glass factory. We can't tell anyone. Or else. We have to get out of here and find that stone right now. Got it covered. No, no, no. Oh, my dad's receptionist hasn't left her desk since the Bush administration. And I mean Bush Sr. Just me. Oh, I forgot. Someone stole his toenail clippers, which you could seriously use, by the way, and he installed a Herculean dual boat lockdown mechanism. It's virtually unbreakable. Yeah, I've heard that before. Chopsticks, chopsticks. But is it with you and chopsticks? They're not just for eating. As I learned when I was stuck in a Yangon prison, all I did was smile. Who knew she was a warlord's daughter? Lucky for me, my Shaolin master taught me well in the art of escape. Dude, that's so sick. OK, now what are we going to do? I hope you're not claustrophobic. <sighs> Tweeting Dr. Freud. gonna find it now. I believe the universe is showing us exactly what to do. Run for the border? Think about it. Today has been the unluckiest day of our lives. We've been locked up, we may be arrested, our friend is in danger, and if you can imagine the worst possible person who have found the ruby. Oh, not him. Anyone but him. About time. You refuse to doctor my time card. And you? I don't know what's more painful. Being hogtied or having to hear that stupid story about the one-armed igloo fisherman. One-armed igloo fisherman? You didn't bust me, Griffin, so I won't bust you. But remember, we're not friends. We're just eating for today. Thank you. Don't thank me. I've had that thing for 82 minutes, and you wouldn't believe the funky luck that's gone down. And I mean that literally. supposed to put the stone in an old lunchbox under a ladder and then leave. And he promises to let Maggie go. He's gonna destroy it. Destroy what? The ruby. DeGroote doesn't care about the money. He's gonna shatter it to avenge his parents' death. Who cares what he does with it as long as Maggie's safe? He didn't see the last part of the fable. The only way to end the curse is to sacrifice someone as brilliant as the star itself during a total eclipse. De Groot needs her. How many times has he called Maggie brilliant? Every single day. There's the lunchbox. How do we stop him? You're gonna do exactly as instructed. Put this in the lunchbox, then go back to the car and keep watch. Okay. Well, wait, what are you gonna do? You know, the stairs might be safer. And slower.
here to save them. You? Not every girl needs saving. I can see that. Nice handcuff knots. Better than his. Who taught you that trick? My mother. Do you know what this maniac was gonna do to me? Oh, something to do with a ritual offering? Blood rites? Maybe a human sacrifice? How many lives have been sacrificed already because of this evil thing? You must let me end this curse forever. I know who you are and why you're doing this. I can't imagine what it was like losing your parents when you were a boy. But destroying another life won't bring them back. That happy family isn't real. I spent every minute ignoring them, always trying to get away. And then they were gone. You were only 10 years old. I'm sorry, Maggie. Just answer me this. How did you pull off all of the museum accidents by yourself? You didn't have access to any of the... No, he didn't. Stroll. So he overpaid and underpaid someone to help him out. I knew it. Boiler room was a warning. But you just couldn't stay out of it. Keep it safe. Where'd you learn to fight Wind Chun style? Can China, you? Can. Ohio. Now give it to me. Or your friend gets a tracheotomy. Don't. He thinks he can keep it. He thinks it'll bring him everything he ever wanted, but it never will. Sorry, but you lot are gonna have to take the fall. that the legend wasn't true, since it could only be destroyed by the sacrifice of someone brilliant. Strolling was smart, but he's no genius. Maggie was right, as usual. Logic, not magic, prevails. Go on, gloat. I have nothing to say. Since when? The officer's name was pronounced Strolanda. In Swedish, it means brilliant. As dean of this school, as a museum board member, I am officially required to congratulate you for your heroics in exposing this conspiracy. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Kate, Garden Hire is going to kill us if we're late for our final but exam. But as a father audit. and an uncle, I am horrified by your unconscionable behavior. You both could have been killed. And Maggie, too, sir. Yes, that's true. If you hadn't acted so quickly, things might have turned out differently for her. Just tell me one thing. How did you get out of here? Yes, yo. Well, I gotta go. Yeah. This better not be a weekly thing with you two. No, sir. You won't always be so lucky. Maybe she won't notice. The 
woman won a Millennium Prize for solving the twin prime conjecture, trust me, she'll notice a $138 accounting deficit. Perfectly balanced. Good work all around. A's for the entire team. Yes. But how? I have absolutely no idea. I guess the only sure thing about luck is, sooner or later, it's about to change. You owe me $138. Daily installments accepted. Is it ready yet? Can you just relax and center yourself for one more stupid minute? You're not seriously gonna sleep in that string sling thing, are you? Oh, I'm gonna sleep like a baby sloth in a Yurumo tree. You should try it. Not a chance. I'm not the one with insomnia. <sighs> okay, your iCat is up. <sighs> now what? Okay, click there. Here? Yep. Okay, not the avatar. Hey, hey, Mom! Hi, Dad! Henry, you're on live! Monitor hug! Oh. <laughs> fingerprints! Fingerprints! What was that? <laughs> Jasper's not having much luck sleeping in my hammock. I'm good! It's so good to see you guys. Honey, sorry we've been so remote lately. <sighs> it's, it's okay. At least we're together now. Sort of, right? <laughs> so, son, tell us. How are you surviving in the urban jungle? Well, Dad, Mom, it's kind of a long and mythic story.